Guy Shaper Auto Performance here. This video's been a long time coming. Probably should have been the first video I ever did. Alright, so Fords. What do we hate about Fords? We don't understand them. They confuse us with these pilot sizes. We never know what pilot we need when we order a torque converter. Alright, let's try to uh, make this a little easier to understand. So nowadays, we have a lot of stroker cranks and things. And those sometimes will take both sizes, where maybe the factory one did not. So that's kind of nice. All right, so where do I start? All right, so if you have a, this is a factory 12 inch converter and if you have a small block Ford, 289, 302, 351 Windsor, 351 Cleveland, uh, any of those guys, uh, also 351M, 400M, they're all going to take this one here. This is the 1.375 diameter pilot. And if you look here, I'm going to measure... Measures, you know, just a couple thou under. So, one and three eighths. Now, here's what's confusing to people. Well, let me show you the other one. Then, if you have... This is mainly on your FE motors. Um, go to order, I don't even know them all. 352, 390, 406, 410, 427, 428... All that fun stuff. Uh, there's a few I've forgotten. 360. This is going to have the 1.848 pilot. So we measure this here just to show you. And you can see that. Okay, just about 1.848. Alright, now. Here's what messes people up. Besides that. Sometimes, you know, I'll ask a customer, okay, uh, what pilot do you need? You know, like, okay, let's say on a motor, this is where it gets confusing. So pretty much your FE motors are going to take the big one. All your small block motors are going to take the small one, the 1.375. FE, 1.848. That's a pretty safe bet. Unless you have a stroke or crank, I'll get that get to that in a minute what's confusing is our 385 series engines our 429 460 motors that are very popular these days they can have either one I think in general the 429 had this one the 1.848 and I'm not even a hundred percent sure but I think even after it became the 460 early on may have still had this 1.848 but at some point the 460 changed to the 1.375 okay so those motors you always have to check and you always have to be careful now here's what happens I've been a victim of this some of you guys have been a victim of this you got a 460 in your car you're ordering a torque converter Torque converter builder says, hey, which pilot you got? 1.848, 1.375. So you guys go and you take a tool like this, a tape measure, and you go to the back of your crank and you go, uh, yeah, uh, must be that bigger one you said. That's uh, more than one and three eighths. Yeah, that's the one I need. So they go and they get that, whether it's an off-the-shelf or a custom. They get it in. Hey, man, a uh, pilot doesn't fit. I want my money back, or you got to make this right. No, you got to make it right because you screwed up. Get yourself a damn real measuring device, okay? First of all, before you blame others, get something to measure with. Something like this here will do. And what you have to realize is this. Now, I got this 
little diagram. I don't remember which company it comes from. It's um, comes from one of the aftermarket crankshaft manufacturers, and this kind of lays this out real simple for you. Here's what people don't understand. So, if you look, yeah, let me get something to point with. So, if you look here, all right, deep inside the crank, okay, you have a bore, and on the outside of the crank, you have a larger bore. You see how this steps in as you go inside the crank. Most people, when you ask them to measure for the pilot, will measure out here because it's easy to get to. It's not, most people don't have the measuring tools to get inside there. So they'll measure out here, and a lot of times they'll just go, uh, uh yeah, it must be the bigger one. Uh, yeah, 1.848, man. Well, it's probably not, it's not necessarily that. You gotta accurately measure that because it could be, it could be, I've seen them as little as 5,000 under that, or, you know, it could be, a hundred thou under that, whatever. A lot of times it's just a rough out, you know, that's kind of roughly bored out, but they're really using the inside, which people can't measure, and it really takes a one and three eighths. Uh, so if you look here, so here's our 1.848 converter, factory converter, never messed with. If we put this straight edge across here, and we measure from, you're basically measuring from the top of that pilot down to the base of the pad, okay? Uh, that's going to be under half inch. It's usually about 450. Uh, if I could, if I had another hand, I would measure far, measure it for you and show you. Um, I guess I'd get the stand and do that if you don't believe me. This here, this pilot's longer, okay? I mean, you can see, I mean, you can see how shallow that is. And then this one sticks up a lot. And then if you put the straight edge across here, you got about an inch from top of the pilot down to what's called the pad. And this is the pad. This is where the torque converter actually sits on the flex plate. Okay, so you got about an inch there. This one is just under a half an inch. It's usually about 450, I believe is what the number is. Uh, so anyways, that is where people get confused and that causes a lot of problems. So again, if we refer to our diagram here, so these aftermarket cranks, which is real cool, they dual step it. So you could put either pilot on it. And I generally recommend if you're dual stepped with an aftermarket crank, scats are usually dual stepped, even the FE ones are usually dual stepped. Now, years ago with the scat cranks, I was having problems with uh, on you know people that had FE motors and got a scat crank. They would just say, "Yeah, I need the 1.848 pilot." Well, they were that first step here was a little bit undersized, only by five thou or so. So when you would send them a converter, it wouldn't fit, and they would get mad. They'd blame you and all that. But really, what was happening was. I don't think those cranks originally were intended to be dual step. They just happen to be really, really close in size. And again, if you're not using an accurate measuring device, um, and there are other measuring devices that work just as well or better, uh, but that's just kind of the most common and simple is one of these uh, six inch dial calipers here. If you didn't accurately measure it, you wouldn't know you were five under. So, very important to do that when you're ordering a torque converter uh, from anybody. I don't care who you order it from. Now, if that dimension is not in this range, what they're showing here, you know, it's, the crank should be about 1.850, so you have about two thousandths of clearance. It's going to be just a slightly larger than the pilot on the converter, so it slips in. If it's a weird number, you're probably going to want the 1.375 uh, pilot on your converter that's going to go into that further, that step further in. Um, and to get in there, you know, you need like a dial bore gauge or a set of snap gauge, a snap gauge or something like that. You can even use a pair of dividers. 
I'll, um, I'll go grab a couple of those things to show you in a minute. But on your 429, 460 aftermarket cranks, I think they're all pretty much dual stepped these days. And I think SCAT fixed that problem with it being just a little bit undersized. I don't think that's really an issue anymore, but if anybody has a SCAT crank or an aftermarket crank and it's a 385 series engine, I pretty much just give you the 1.375 Pilot. I've never had a problem with that. 1.848, it's kind of an oddball because it was really something they did in the 60s on the FE motors, a little bit 429, 460, but uh, it was, you know, it's not as common. You want to go with the 1 and 3 eighths whenever possible. It's just more common. Say you want to sell it to somebody down the road or put it in another project vehicle, whatever you're doing, more likely that the 1 and 3 eighths is going to fit something else. Uh, and like I said, it always fits all your small box, so that's a good thing. So always go with 1 and 3 eighths if you can. And sometimes they're cheaper, too. You pay more money for those oddball pilot sizes. Uh, not always, but sometimes. So, all right. I think, hopefully, that's enough to clear this up. I'll, um, let me just go get a couple of measuring devices. Now, one thing I will mention that I remember, Eagle Cranks, if it's an FE engine, I don't believe those are dual stepped. At least they didn't used to be. Those, um, you know, FE Eagle Crank is going to take the 1.848 pilot. But again, you know, measure this yourself because things change, you know, companies change things over time. Uh, I wish I remembered what company gave this one out. This diagram here, this is. Uh, Really cool that they gave a print. I like that. Because a lot of times my customers, you know, will have a crank that's dual step like this, and I'll tell them, and they'll tell me, no, nah, man, I need the 1.848 pilot. And I tell them, no, just get the 1 3 8 No, 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 takes the other one. You're wrong. I measured it. Well, you measured out here. You didn't measure in here. So let me just grab a couple things. Um, I do apologize I don't have an actual crankshaft here today to show you. I will do that another time when we go. Uh, I'm going to do another video on checking your converter to flex plate clearance and all that kind of stuff. And we'll do that. But uh, give me one minute. Let me go grab a couple measuring tools. All right. So this is... I call it a snap gauge, but um, I think technically they call it a telescoping gauge. And what you do is you you push you know you push these in, you stick it inside the bore, and then you let them spring out. And then there's a you tighten this, and then what you do is you you kind of hold it at a bit of an angle, and then you rock it, and then it'll set these to the inside diameter of that bore. And then you'll just take your calipers and measure them like this. They're pretty accurate. This honestly is a cheap pair. It's a Chinese pair. I don't recommend these. They, this was a mistake. Uh, me buying these. I bought the. I bought this. You know, a set of these many years ago when I really didn't have much money. And it was a mistake. It's, you know, sometimes cheap Chinese stuff does not work out. So um, I don't use them a whole lot, but for what I do. Uh, but one day I'm going to get a good U.S. made set, you know, some Starrettes or Brown and Shops or something. But if you're just measuring a crank one time, you know, one of these, just you can just get one of these, a cheap one. It'll, it'll get you by for that. Uh, here's the cheapest thing to get. 